Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on the cis loop ligand gated ion channels. In this video, what we're going to talk about is the glycine receptors within the spinal cord. Okay, uh, so the way we're going to begin is we're going to start by looking at glycine as a neurotransmitter. We're then going to look at the role of glycine uh, in the spinal cord because it is the biggest inhibitory neurotransmitter within the spinal cord. Uh, GABA is the main inhibitory uh, neurotransmitter in the brain, but glycine is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter in the spinal cord. We're then going to talk about uh, the structure of the glycine receptor uh, and we'll finally move on to look at um, a pharmacological agent, namely, st namely strychnine, uh, which um, uh, is a competitive ag antagonist at these um, glycine receptors within the spinal cord. Okay, so we'll start off with what glycine actually is. So glycine is a proteinergic amino acid. Uh, so it's an amino acid that is used within proteins. So its structure, it's actually the simplest of all the amino acids. So uh, here is the amino group, okay? Off this, uh, the, well, this amino group comes off the alpha carbon of the glycine, and then also off the alpha carbon you have a hydrogen, which is off all proteinergic amino acids, and then you also have the carboxylic acid group over here. Okay, now the R group in the case of glycine is another hydrogen, so it, that's why it's the simplest uh, proteinergic amino acid, because um, it simply just has a hydrogen atom as its uh, R group. Okay, so this is the structure of the amino acid glycine. Okay, and uh, the three letter amino acid code for glycine would be GLY, and the single letter amino acid code for glycine would be G. Right, okay, so now let's talk about the role of uh, glycine in the uh, spinal cord. Okay, so if we draw a little picture of the spinal cord then, so we're taking a transverse cross-section of the spinal cord now, and it has these two incisors, one at the um, ventral aspect and one at the dorsal aspect. Okay, so we'll draw the spinal cord like so. So here's the ventral little fissure, here's the dorsal one. Right, so you have this sort of butterfly shape of grey matter within the spinal cord. So, um, grey matter is the cell bodies of neurons, whereas the white matter is the axons of neurons. Uh, so, it's the myelin of the axons uh, that makes the white matter appear white. Okay, so, here we go. So, the grey matter is in this sort of a shape here. So, you have this shape here, which is the grey matter of the spinal cord. Okay? And uh, you call these sort of processes of the grey matter that extend ventrally. So this is the front here. This is the ventral aspect of the spinal cord. And this is the dorsal aspect of the spinal cord. You call these processes that sort of extend ventrally, those are called the ventral horns of the spinal cord. So this is a ventral horn. Okay? And the processes which extend dorsally, these are the dorsal horns of the spinal cord. Dorsal horn. And then you also have uh, columns of white matter. So you have back here, these two pieces of white matter. So the white matter on this side of the... Let me highlight this in. So this white matter here, okay, which I'm circulating colouring in in pink here, this is a dorsal column, but you obviously have two dorsal columns. So you have the left dorsal column here and the right dorsal column here. So this is the dorsal column white matter. Dorsal column. Okay, you then have two other columns. Uh, so you also have the lateral column here. So this is the lateral white matter column. And let me uh, colour this in as well. So I'll colour this in in blue. So this sort of portion here is the lateral column of white matter. Okay. Uh, and um, then um, you have a portion that will be referred to more as the anterolateral portion of a white matter column. And then you have an anterior uh, white matter column here. Okay, so let me 
colour these in separately. So in orange here, this is the uh, anterior white matter column here. Okay, so this is the anterior column. And this portion in between the anterior and the lateral column, that would be referred to as the anterolateral column. Okay, so this here is the anterolateral column. Although some people often just refer to the entire thing, all the lateral, all of this bit in the middle, and all of the anterior as the anterolateral column. So you have to be careful with what people mean by this. Okay, so you have these white matter columns within the spinal cord. Right, now in the ventral horn of the spinal cord are the cell bodies of motor neurons. Okay, so let's draw a motor neuron here. So this is the cell body of a motor neuron. Then the uh, axon of this motor neuron comes out and is then going to go into a mixed spinal nerve and then it will eventually synapse onto um, some skeletal myofiber. So out of the ventral horn come the um, neurons which synapse onto skeletal muscle cells. Okay, so this is a myofiber here. Myo fiber and it's innervated by this alpha motor neuron here so let me just move this this way a little bit okay so this is a alpha motor neuron alpha motor neuron okay so what where's the role of glycine in all of this well basically this alpha motor neuron when it's got its cell body in the spinal cord it will have inhibitory interneurons synapsing onto it. So I'll draw one of these here. So let's have this as an inhibitory interneuron. Okay, uh, and I hope that's visible on the camera. I think it is. Okay, so this little neuron that I've drawn here, this is going to be an inhibitory interneuron. So it's going to be trying to inhibit the alpha motor neuron from firing an action potential. So this is an inhibitory interneuron. Okay, and how does it inhibit this um, this alpha motor neuron from firing an action potential? Well, basically, it releases the neurotransmitter glycine onto the uh, alpha motor neuron. And let's now discuss how glycine is going to inhibit this alpha motor neuron. So, let's zoom up this synapse hugely. Okay, so here we have our, um, uh, the axon terminal of our inhibitory um, interneuron. And then here we have a dendritic spine, maybe, of our alpha uh, motor neuron. So the alpha motor neuron will have dendrites. And off the dendrites come these little processes known as dendritic spines, which are the processes which interface with um, axon terminals of neurons in synapses. Not a dendritic space, sorry a dendritic spine. Okay, right. So, uh, this axon terminal here will be releasing glycine into uh, the synaptic cleft here. So this is glycine being released into the synaptic cleft. And then glycine will be diffusing across the synaptic cleft, and it will be acting on receptors that are on the surface of the cell. Now, for now, I will just draw a very basic picture of these receptors. Uh, we'll look at the structure of these in a lot more detail in a moment. Okay, so this is our glycine receptor then in turquoise here. Okay. There we go. So this is a glycine receptor. Okay, so um, what's going to happen when the glycine binds to the glycine receptor then? Well, um, glycine will bind to the glycine receptor and it will cause it to open. So let me discuss the opening and closing of the uh, glycine receptor. So you start off with your glycine receptor in a closed but resting state. And this is going to be important uh, because... Um, there's going to also be a closed uh, desensitized state, which will be uh, different from the closed resting state. So the closed resting state, you have no ligand bound, um, but if ligand does bind, you can go into the open state. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.